Brutus Beefcake Series 10 from the WWE Elite Legends line, the Target exclusive line. Yeah, here's the look at that beautiful side art. Look at that. Look at the beefer. And uh, here's his back. Um, before he was cutting in a strutting, Brutus Beefcake team with Greg the Hammer Valentine as an arrogant member of Luscious Johnny Valiant's dream team. The duo won the tag team championships in 1985 from the U.S. Express. The U.S. Express was Mike Rotundo and Barry Windham. And defended against a stacked tag team division until they lost to the British Bulldogs at WrestleMania 2. When I was a kid, going into WrestleMania 2 was when I started getting into wrestling. Brutus Beefcake and Greg the Hammer Valentine were the tag team champions when I started watching wrestling. So this is this is my childhood. This is how far I go back. And I remember when Beefcake um, left the Dream Team in WrestleMania 3 and he became the barber. But uh, yeah, so then on the bottom of this card you have the other figures from the wave. So I already have a review of Vader and John Cena up there. My Diamond Dallas Page figure should be arriving soon. I ordered this on Target's website back in April. And here it is July and I finally got it. I'm pretty stoked about this figure. I had a Mandela effect going on. Now the silver belts are often referred to as the Bulldog belts because they are the tag belts that the Bulldogs wore. But who did the Bulldogs beat to win the Tag Team Championship? Of course, they beat the Dream Team. They beat Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine. So it would make sense for Beefcake and Valentine to have those belts. Now, I googled it, and it's hard to find nice color photos because they just they didn't do promo photos back then, really. Um, that wasn't really a thing yet. And it does look like Beefcake and the Hammer held these belts. For whatever reason, I thought Beefcake and the Hammer held the belts that Rotundo and Wyndham wore at WrestleMania 1. Um, uh, they, the ones that they beat the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov for. And when they dropped them to the Dream Team, I thought it was those belts. I didn't think it was the Bulldog belts. But here we go. Brutus Beefcake has the Bulldog belt. So that's really cool. And I googled it and it matches up. So there you go. I, that's something I, I just learned. Because, you know, when that was going on, I was a kid. So I don't really remember the belts too much back then. And plus, I wasn't watching wrestling every week. We only had one TV in the house and I was only allowed to watch wrestling like when my parents would let me watch wrestling. So it was very once in a while kind of thing for me. But the Bulldog belts, there you go, go figure. I'm gonna take this guy out of the package and we're gonna have a look. And here's the beefer out of the package. And I put the sunglasses on him and he's looking pretty sweet. I love this soft goods. Uh, let's get this off of him. Yeah, he had a bunch of plastic. Oh, it's got to go all the way down the belt. I screwed this one up, didn't I? Well, anyway, he's got the soft goods on him. They're Velcro in the front, so you can Velcro them up. And there he is in his glory. Here he is from behind. The print runs down his pants. He's got white boots. He's got all the articulation you'd expect in an elite figure. And he's just a badass looking figure um, because Brutus Beefcake was a badass dude before he was the barber and became a cartoon character. He was just like a muscle, kind of quiet guy, him and Valentine. Uh, Johnny Valiant did all the talking for them, really. So there you go. Brutus Beefcake, the beefer. And he comes with some extra hands. He has, he's, uh, comes out of the package, one gripping hand, one fist. He comes with another fist and the other gripping hand. And here's Beefcake without his robe. As you can see, um, there he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
So my figure has a little bit of paint wear on his eyebrow and uh, it's not the end of the world. It's just something I wanted to point out. His eyebrows, his eyebrows, the paint is kind of already worn off. It was like that in the package and that's kind of a bummer. Um, but I'm going to keep the sunglasses on him so you're not really going to notice it that much. Uh, here he is without his, his robe from behind. And here he is with the tag belt on, and he's got that bulldog belt, which I learned today that is the belt that he wore. And here he is, full entrance gear with the belts. Everything's on. There he is, Brutus Beefcake. And uh, there we go. I'll take some shots, and I'll meet you guys on the couch to give you my final thoughts. Yeah, so overall, this is a really cool figure. Um, I'm glad that Mattel decided to go with Brutus Beefcake, pre-Barber. Um, we haven't had a pre-Barber figure since the LJN figure. And that was the original release. In uh, 1989, they put it in the black card and re-released it as Brutus the Barber Beefcake. But... It was the same figure. This is the first Brutus Beefcake figure we've had since that figure. There's also a Chase variation coming out. But they Target sent me the regular variation. So this is the one I got. I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I'll keep my eye out for that Chase. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen these in the stores yet. Because I don't think you have. I sure as heck haven't, and uh, when, when Target said they sent it to me, I got really excited. But I imagine these are coming now. Now, these were originally online exclusive, but I think that was just for the pre-orders. So I have to imagine that Brutus and DDP will be available in the stores um, pretty soon if they're not already there. Thank you guys for watching and uh, leave a comment below. Let me know. Let me know if uh, you remember Brutus pre-Barber, if you go back that far like I do. And uh, we'll have some... Or if you only remember him as the Barber, or maybe you caught him in the 90s in WCW when he changed his name every couple of months. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.